everybody, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to be painting in watercolor a purple finch for you. Uh, I painted it once already um, and I'm going to paint it again. Somebody had requested that uh, she wanted to buy it, but this is part of a bigger painting. So um, this is the bird that I will be painting for you today. It's called a purple finch, and um, they're very similar to house finches, which are also red in color. There's some slight variances to their bodies and very difficult to tell apart, I understand. So, uh, but today we'll be doing the purple finch, so stay tuned. Oh, and thank you all for the well wishes. I'm doing much better today. I finally tested negative for COVID, so I am free and clear of it, I hope. I hope it doesn't come back, but um, I, I suppose it could. But I'm not going to go there, so uh, the wedding was beautiful. Everything went wonderfully, except for the ton of us who ended up with COVID. It ended up being a super spreader event, <laughs> and uh, it's going around pretty crazy here right now. Anyway, so... Uh, we kind of expected it to happen, but I didn't expect to get it, although I was hugging, you know, 100 people, so uh, I'm sure that it was not a good thing, but um, my son and his new bride did not get it, so that was a good thing, and uh, most everyone who has it uh, has gotten through it okay. There's one friend of mine that I'm a little concerned about, but he seems to be doing okay, we all took the antivirals, those of us who needed them, and we're getting better. So uh, today was day, oh, I don't know, let's see, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, day 11 for me, and I finally tested negative. So um, anyway, let's get on with this painting. It's just going to be a quick demo tutorial for you. Uh, you can see how I've painted it and yeah just have fun with it so let's get started okay so today I'm going to be painting in this little cold press watercolor book by Paul Rubens it's a block actually um, I believe this is a five by seven I've already put my sketch on here so we can go ahead and get started I'll show you the colors that I'm choosing as we go and you can see what those are. I just got to pull them out of my palette here. Let me spray them all down. Here's a quick look at the picture that I am using for reference. I found it on Pixabay and I will post the photo or a link to it on the Facebook group as well. I'm going to go in and wet the paper, avoiding the eye and the white area of the tail and the brown on the wings. Everything else will be wet down. And uh, then I'll go ahead in with the paint and just kind of let it spread and do its thing. First thing I do is go in with a lighter value of color and then I gradually layer that up. Now I'm going to go in and begin by putting the 
alizarin crimson in on the head and I could have even gone in a little bit lighter than I did but uh, I'll still be layering those colors up and I will be using the other red as well which will give it some vibrancy of course I just happened to be off frame so you're not seeing a lot of this but basically I was just dropping in the red and then I'm bringing it down with water so that it's more pale in the belly area I apologize for this it will be in frame very soon or this video won't be posted at all <laughs> it's so frustrating to me when that happens and it usually happens more when it's been a while since I've put a video out so now I'm going in with the yellow ochre and I also mixed in some of my quinacridone burnt orange to kind of give more depth to that yellow color and then I'm using the regular permanent yellow for the beak area. Now I'm using some of the indigo blue as a gray color and I'm really watering it down so that I can put it into the beak area. I apologize for my thumb as well being in the way, um, but I will be going in with a pale bit of alizarin crimson there too to put just a hint of pink in the beak now I'm going to go in with some of the lunar black that I have to go in just underneath the beak there's some darkened areas as well as some brown and I'm adding that in just swiping it with the end of my brush just the tip I believe this is a number two. Oh wait no this is a da Vinci brush I'm sorry that one is a size one or a zero but I'm going in with the tip and I'm just putting in some of the black areas that I see you can use whatever small brush you have that comes to a fine point in order to do the fur. I do have other brushes that I use for fur as well or for feathers, and uh, but for the most part for this painting, I just use the tip of a thin brush, either a four, a two, or a zero. And you can use whatever it is that you have. Now I just move about the painting wherever it needs to dry. I let it dry and then I just move on to another spot. So basically uh, here I'm just using the brown and the, uh, the hematite burnt scarlet and the quinacridone burnt orange to come up with the brown that I want for this portion of the wing. And I'm just gonna continue going down sometimes just using solely hematite tight burnt scarlet sometimes I add a little black in uh, and it'll go back and forth as I work down the wing And now I'm going to re-wet the area just in front of the wing so that I can add a little more color and just kind of blend that all out. I'll be using some yellow ochre, some of the quinacridone burnt orange, and also the alizarin crimson in this area. I keep it very diluted because you can always build up. It's a lot easier to build up than to remove color. And then I'm defining a couple spots that I saw in the photo that had a very orangey look, and I really liked the way that looked. Now in my original painting, I didn't do it that way, but I like this. I apologize, I have my camera angle off and I needed to come in at an angle so that my hand is not in the way. I'm sure I'll receive complaints about it, but 
I uh, contemplated not putting this video up at all, and I know some of you wanted it, so that's why it is here. Uh, I am fully aware that I screwed it up, though, so you don't need to tell me. <laughs> Thanks. Now, I've gone in a little bit too dark there, but as long as you go quickly back in with water, that um, indigo will move around. If it starts to dry, it settles into the paper very quickly. So you just have to get at it fast. Now, the lunar black is a granulating color, so it is non-staining. You can lift it very easily. The same with my hematite burnt scarlet. Uh, but the alizarin crimson, the quinacridone burnt orange, those colors are highly staining as well as the indigo. And if you're not quick about adding water to it to prevent it from sinking into the paper, you're going to end up with dark lines there. There are other color alternatives that you can use that are less staining, but really any gray like um, Payne's Gray, or uh, or a regular black or um, ultramarine blue or any of those, they're going to have some staining involved. So you're gonna run into that problem. But just wet your paper and you can slow the process down very quickly. Now you could wet your paper ahead of time and then add the color in, but you have less control over where that color is going to spread to. So putting that line in the way I did and then just kind of washing it out actually put the color in the spot that I needed it to go. And I had better control over it that way. I'm still fiddling with this beak a little bit, but I'm just getting uh, to uh, particular about things trying to follow this this uh, photo to a T. Now the photos use those as a reference you don't have to be exact in everything in fact there were things that I changed in this photo um, the wings are a little different uh, and that kind of thing so uh, I think even the black ring that I added around the eye was also something that was not in the original photo, but I can't remember for sure. Now here I'm going in with watered down indigo to give it a gray look. If you look at that eye real closely, you can see that there is a very light gray at the top. Now I do add a little white dot in at the end, but for the most part, I leave it gray so it looks more natural. And once that dries, I'll go back in with the black and do the lower portion with lunar black and a little bit of indigo mixed in because it helps to stain the color a little bit better. And when you look at the photo reference, you can see little bits of darkness or black within the red tufts on top of the head. So I'm going ahead and putting those in now and then I'll go over it with the red so that they kind of blend in. I'm not happy because there's a little too much water on my brush as you can see there so I'm just kind of lifting that back off and then I'll just bring that red up off the side of my brush. Now I've grabbed a grainer brush just to use that for a little more of these hair like feathers on the neck and it lays them down a lot more quickly. You just have to be very careful that you're changing your direction a little bit so that they don't get too uniform and also that you use just barely the tip of the brush. Again, I'm sorry for my hand getting in the way. I'm going backwards. Normally I don't do that, but being a lefty, this is a hard angle for me. So I'm trying, this is the only way I can do it. Otherwise you you can't see me anyway. 
but I just go ahead and put those in there and they're very hair like feathers on the head they get more feather like as you come down into the belly and you'll see how I put those in later you can see I have some of them penciled in on my sketch just here and there so that I know where I where my landmarks are basically Now I'm going to go ahead and paint the branch the bird is standing on. I'm going to wet the entire branch first and we'll do a wet into wet wash. I'm going to be using some yellow ochre in the bottom area of the branch and then also my hematite burnt scarlet and lamp black, all of which are granulating colors. And then I will put a few grains of salt on the branch at the end when I'm finished so that it will help the granulation even more and add more texture to the branch. The key to using salt is to make sure that you allow it to dry on its own. If you use a dryer then you're defeating the purpose of the salt absorbing some of the pigment from the paper. It needs to dry slowly as the salt is absorbing that color in those areas and then you get that granulating effect. Now you don't want to overdo it with the salt here, just a few little bits here and there, otherwise you draw up too much color with these granulating colors um, sitting on top of the paper that way, they will, it'll draw up a lot of pigment, so you have to be very careful with that. Now I'm going to go into the eye and finish the eye up. Slow and steady wins the race here. You want to just go in very lightly with the color, not rush it too quickly or you end up with too much. Now, mo with these colors, you can lift it. If you end up with too much color, just take a towel and, and uh, just dab it on there and you'll lift the color back off again. But to avoid that, you just want to go in with small layers. Now there, I had a little bit too much yellow ochre on my brush so now I'm lifting some of that color back up again. I believe that was yellow ochre. It's hard for me to tell. And I'm taking some of the lunar black now and I'm going in and I'm dulling that color back down with a little feathering of black here and there. Which you can see if you zoom in on the photo. Don't worry about being so exact though. You don't have to follow the reference photo exactly. Uh, I have a little more black underneath the bottom of the beak than what is really shown in the photo, but I liked it, so I left it in there.
Now here I'm wetting the area and I'm going in with a little more of that quinacridone burnt orange and then after that dries I'll go in with some white to put the white feathering in and then there will be more quinacridone burnt orange feathering going in behind that as well. Now that I've taken the salt off of that branch, I'm adding a little more of the lunar black for texture with the bark. Here I'm using my uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White ink which works very well. It's very opaque, even more opaque than gouache is. So I like to use it for feathers like this because it shows up so well and so easily and I don't have to keep relayering and relayering in order to get the depth of color that I want or value that I want. Basically from here on out, all I'm doing is touching up color, adding a little bit more here and there, some of the orange color, some of the red color, adding more white, more gray, but I'm just going back and forth and finishing off all of these areas and then I'm going to be done.
Okay, so that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps me. If you're new to my channel, subscribe. I'd love to see you back. And I promise next time I will have my hand out of the way and the frame right on the recording. In the meantime, remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. God bless you. I love you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.